Hello, welcome to the chat that we're going to have with some of your Belfast Giants players from yesteryear. Um, this year we're going back to 2019, the Challenge Cup final against the Guildford Flames in Cardiff. Uh, this was going for a back-to-back -back championship and uh, we thought we'd bring some of those faces uh, that played in that game or were about that game um, for a bit of a chat for our fans, the Belfast Giants fans. We hope you're keeping well, guys. Um, I've still got the COVID hair and uh, don't, I haven't got a hat to put on, so you'll have to forgive me that way. First guy we're going to bring up today, he's a Northern Ireland local, uh, Ballymoney's finest. Um, he was a healthy scratch this game, which he has pointed out to us already, uh, but I couldn't put this together without bringing Andre Dixon in. Hello, Simon, how's it going? Yeah, go, I'm good, mate, how are you? Yeah, not bad, not bad, just chill. Good man. How's things going for over the COVID period? Have you been uh, obviously you haven't been out playing golf or anything, which has been a bit of a challenge. No, tomorrow back tomorrow. Clubs open again tomorrow, so uh, that's the one highlight of you know not getting picked for the stream series. <laughs> oh, you didn't get drafted for that. That's bad, crack mate. Uh, it's the biggest controversy since uh, the Oilers traded Gretzky. But sure, what can you do? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, listen, we were we look forward to having a bit of a chat with you here, with a couple of other boys. And um, one of the ones I want to bring in now um, made a big, big impact in this. And in his words, he only played sixty three seconds um, of the game. But uh, as we go on to talk about the the, um, the the impact that he did have during the game, um, that big block in the third period was absolutely crucial uh, for the chance winning this championship. Let's bring in Jonathan Boxall. What's going on, Sis? Boxy, I'm good, good, mate. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Family man now, daddy. Um, how's the daughter doing? Yeah, she's good. Yeah, she's uh, certainly, it's an adjustment, but it's a wonderful adjustment. So very happy with uh, life being a dad so far. And how's, uh, well, what, what's happening, the, the updates so far with Boston? What's happening in Massachusetts? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it changes every day, obviously. It's a state-by-state -state thing, but here in Massachusetts and Boston, we've got a pretty good... Um, sort of structure and, and process around uh, getting the vaccine out. And I've actually had my first first jab. I got my second one booked in about two weeks' time. So I'm going to be fully vaccinated, which is a good thing. But um, no, it's it's just good to see some light at the end of the tunnel with everything that's considered going on in the last 12 months. Yeah, they've, they've just launched today. Uh, over 45s um, in uh, Northern Ireland can get it. So I think Dicko can get his next week as well. Hey, Dicko. <laughs> I've already got my first one. Oh, okay, dad. It's not. It's not what you know. Sure, man. I tell you, if I was a dog, they put me down. I got it ages ago. I was in that <laughs> extreme group, so I was. So <laughs> I was one of the first at the door. But yeah, I've got mine. So I, I get my second one in April. So a couple of weeks. Good man. Good, good man. Tomorrow actually is April, but we'll, we'll let you off that one. Um, another Massachusetts native um, who uh, made a big impact in, when he came in for that uh, remainder of that season. Um, a guy who. He's got the skills to burn um, the Belfast Datsuk, Mr. Christopher Higgins. Chris Higgins. Hey, Sam, how are you doing? Thanks for having me. I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, uh, I'm in here in, in Boston uh, with John. I can't seem to get rid of him. But um, no, I'm good. I'm good. The family's good. Uh, same as John. I, I was able to get... Uh, the vaccine through work. I'm in the hospitals, um, you know, pretty much every day for work. So I was able to get the vaccine, which was nice. And uh, things are starting to open up a little bit. So, which has been nice. Good, good, good. Um, I believe that you, you became a dad not so long ago as well. I did. Yep. Um, I got a little guy. His name is Crew and uh, he's four months old. And if Kiefer was smart, he'd try to sign him as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> you must be sinking that in there with Boxy's daughter as well, are you? Yeah, they're yeah they're dating. They've gone on a couple of dates so far. It's been, it's been good. Good, good. Well, we'll try to get your picture coming in as we, as we move forward here. But guys, listen, I want to take it back to uh, that Sunday in Cardiff. Um, back to back championships is it's always tough to go for. Gecko, you were involved in both in in some capacity. Most of the time was involved drinking beer, but. Um, a healthy scratch in that game against Guildford Flames. Um, and Guildford were always going to be a tough opponent because they're, you know, they had a really good team that year, um, especially going to Cardiff. They were in good form. 
Yeah, yeah, they're always a tough team. And obviously, it was their sort of first final since they've got into the Elite League. Um, so they had a they had a lot riding on it. They wanted to make their mark like any team. You get that first choice, they can really kick you on a bit. So, yeah, it was always going to be tough. And I think at the time, they had the two goalies. They weren't sure who was going to play. And, uh, yeah, and very skilled decor as well. Um, some of the guys there can shoot it hard as box, he can tell you. Absolutely, and we will come to that, believe you me. Uh, Higgy, you played an important part in that uh, game itself. It, the first period was it was a really, really quick period, even for the fans. I think it lasted about 28 minutes, um, and you knew Guildford were going to come at you early on. Yeah, um, you know, they uh, they were they were a quick team. They're, they were small, but they're in your face constantly. Uh, they played a lot bigger than, you know, their size as well. I mean, they played the body. They, you know, they they finish every check. They go hard to the net. Um, they were they were just pests to play again. So uh, we knew kind of right away that we had to have one of our better games in order to to come out on top. Boxy again, Guildford that season. Um, they came in a couple of years beforehand. They get stronger and stronger every single year. And one of their 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 main assets was the the special teams on the power play. They were absolutely lethal. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, very, very good team, well coached, um, very motivated going into that game. And, and as both the guys said, they uh, certainly a quick team and, and move the puck well. So uh, on the power play, as they as they showed, they um, can certainly put the puck in the net, and that was a dangerous threat throughout the, throughout the game. The first period, as I say, was very, very quick. We ended up getting the power play at the end of that period itself, and. Um, Patrick Dwyer managed to get the power play goal 31 seconds into the second period. What what do you remember about that, Higgy? Um, I, I mean, what I remember was, was that Patty Dwyer was a stud all season. Um, I remember coming in uh, right away and just the first practice seeing, you know, how skilled he was. Um, and, and you just knew that when you have a guy in the lineup, um, you know, with his skill and his caliber, um, that you're in any game. So, um yeah, he was deadly. Um, it was great, especially when you got a guy like him uh, to get us on the board. Uh, you know, good things are going to happen, you know, throughout the rest of the game. Dicko, you know, you're usually the first guy on the ice and one of the last off, especially in practices. And you're, you're up against these guys, like a Higgy, and you're, like, you're talking Patrick Dwyer. He played nearly 400 games in the NHL. And facing a guy with a shot like that, and he wasn't that far. I think he was probably about 30 feet out from the – from the net on uh, Cazola, it's always going to be hard. Yeah, well, you mentioned that there are 400 games in the NHL, and then whenever we're in a big game situation, you want your big game players to step up, and he had the experience and the uh, and the, and the guy to go and do that and, and you know, step up and, and be a difference in the game because it was a very tight game. Um, back and forth, there wasn't that many chances, if I remember correctly, at the start. And, uh, yeah, he, he was a big difference maker. Um it all comes down from that experience that he's had. He's a great player, as we all know. Anyone who watched him in Belfast could test him for that. Boxer, you, the, the previous year, um, I remember speaking to you about this after when we did the uh, the Sudden Death uh, documentary after this cup final. And I remember you saying, going away for a year and coming back and looking up in, at the SSA Arena and seeing the banner from the year before sort of give you a wee bit of motivation to try and pick up a bit of silverware that year. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, you know it was great to see guys like Kiefer and Dicko and, and people that I played with and good friends be successful that season. But to not be a part of it um, and to go through what I went through in, in MK, um, you know, it, was, it made it even more motivating to come in and be successful playing for the Giants. So um, no, it was it was obviously a big achievement for the team the year before. But um, for me, not being a part of it was, was something that was uh, a little bit frustrating and, and even more motivating to come into the season and be successful like we were as a team. It goes to one one. They get a power play goal. We knew again that they were going to be dangerous on the uh, with the extra man on the ice. Crooks gets a, a low shot past Besco, and you know, looking back at that season, and Dicko, you spent a lot of time with him. Besco was lights out the whole season. Oh, absolutely. Um, probably, in, well, my time in Belfast anyway. Apart from you know Murph in his prime, and Besco were pretty even. But for a one one season performance, I think Besco probably tops it. You know, you just the games we went to, that uh, European final we were in, he was lights out there. Um, yeah. Even if you think, I think it was an overtime, he made a save where uh, the puck ever hit the back of the glass and came back over the net. And, you, you know, he's casual, he just passes it and calm and collecting. If you can have a goal, he's calm back there, sort of feeds and filters back through the team. And 
and there's a common presence and yeah he was he was some player so he was again the third period i want i want to get reactions from the um and i know all three of you were on the bench when the goal uh was scored by Smo for the ot winner the third period you know it, it was the end the end it was really really exciting game for such a low scoring game but going into that overtime period Peggy, do you remember what was said in, in, in the dressing room in between the um, uh, th- third period finish and an OT starting? Uh, you know, I think it was just one of those things that, like, um, listen, we, I feel like it was probably one of the deepest Belfast Giants team, you know, in years. Um, you know, we had we had tons of tons of confidence uh, in ourselves. Uh, we knew that, and Kiefer just said, listen, just just play your game. You guys have been doing it kind of all year. Um, just stick to the basics um, and go out and play and, and do what you have to do. And I think, like I said, with just from top to bo- bottom, from Besco to the defense all the way up to the top, I mean, we, we just knew we had such a deep team and uh, we just had to go out there and, and just someone would get their, their chance and, and smoke buried, which was great. And obviously in that in between the third period and the, um, the overtime starting Boxy, how are you feeling? Because, you know, one of the biggest moments of that game that everybody remembers was the block that you, for some reason, decided to lie down in front of Akrid, who took a shot, full power. And again, it, it, he was bending the stick. And he, if he had reached it a little bit further, he was going to hit the roof of the, the uh, Viola Arena. But he had a big wind up on that and taking one for the team, you know, that you'll never get a better example. Yeah, so I think the bigger question is what what was Kiefer thinking putting me on the ice with that much time <laughs> time left in the game? Because I had a you know I was very uh, rusty at that point, and uh, for some strange reason I don't know what happened. Kiefer got a little bit of rush of blood to the head and put me on the ice, and we had I remember we had a offensive zone um, sort of offside face off, and, and John I believe was taking the draw and. And all, and all I was thinking was like, please win this draw so we have possession and you can dump it in and I can go chase chase Akka around for 30 seconds and then get off the ice. And for whatever reason, you know, they, they win the draw and uh, we get we get hemmed in in the in the D zone. And um, if you actually watch the play, I was Rochi put the puck to an area where normally someone who probably was a little bit more confident being on the ice would have been in that spot, but. For me, I was sort of like, you know, I can't get caught on the on the wrong side of defensively, and uh, you know, you can always defend inside out, not outside in. So I was literally on the crease, and Rochi didn't expect me to be there, so he put it to an area where I should have been. And you know, I see Akrid coming down, tickling the lights with his stick, and you know, I had to had to make a choice and lay down. And fortunately, it, it hit me and was able to to stop him. You know, get that puck through to the net. So uh, <laughs> the bigger question, as you said, I keep a me on the ice but you know i appreciate the opportunity and being able to contribute some way in the games hey you're on the bench when this is happening um you know you're, you you play right wing you, you're, I, I can't remember i've actually you took over when he jumped off the ice because i remember i remember watching the gopro camera that was sitting at the top of the bench with half a stand and open the door um you see boxy coming off the ice and bending over backwards because obviously that one would have hurt yeah, I mean, listen. Uh, there's no denying it. Um, it. It takes a lot of a lot of guts to to do what John did. I mean, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have saw a 68 laying up. <laughs> so um, no, I mean that that's just the type. It would have gone player. through you. <laughs> that's the type of player. That's the type of player that John John is or was. Um, you know, he 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 literally laid it down on the line for for the guys who made a huge play. Um, you know, to especially give us some momentum going into the into overtime. So it was a great play by John. And Dicko, you know, a pretty. I think you did play against Guildford that year at some point, facing a shot. You know, from the likes of Akrid, from you know, sixty feet is always going to be difficult. But seeing your guys in front of you taking one for the team makes it a lot your job, but as a goaltender, an awful lot easier. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm paying for. Like uh, hit them, not me. You know, but. Um, no, they uh, even when Keeper used to play, he used to dive head first into the box. I used to tell him, "Don't do that," because if I'm in there, arrive or up by a few or down by a few. So, you know, uh, it's 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 a big thing. But you know, at, at that stage in the game, it, it's a must. Um, Higgy says he, he wouldn't do it, but I think he would. You know, if it came to it, most players would dive down in front of that puck late in the game. Higgy, can you confirm <laughs> that? 
Uh, you know, maybe, maybe I would have went down, maybe <laughs> or something like that. I'm not sure, but actually, you know what? No, I have a pretty good stick, so I would have been able to kind of block that with my stick and flamingo out of the way. So I would, I would have got it. You would have just been, you would've just been, stand, you would've just yeah, been standing in the right spot. You wouldn't have had to lay down. Yeah, I, um, it would have just been a simple poke check, and I probably would have had a breakaway and score at the end of the game right then and there. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's talk about the end of the game. Dustin Johnner dumps the puck in on the goalie. He plays it, and Jordan Up miss plays it in the corner under the pressure from Johnner again. He gets it out front. Smoke gets the winner. All three of you are on the bench at that time. Boxy, what's going through your head? Yeah, I mean, it's it's an interesting play, right? Because um, I think Ben Davis came down on a breakaway, um, and Besco made a huge save to, to keep it keep us alive. And then Gary made a good play on the boards, and, and Johnner made that dump and decided to go in full check and create the turnover. And then Smo obviously was the right guy to, to take the shot, but it was just, I mean, it was just so many nerves and emotions going through you when, when we were in overtime and to see the puck hit the back of the net, just a complete rush of excitement. And um, yeah, it just, it's, it's crazy to look back at the, at the videos and the experience and sort of put yourself back in that space. So even just talking about it, you kind of remember what that experience was, but it was just, it was just such a, such a good feeling. And to, to have win some silverware with the group was just such a, such a special thing considering what we'd what we've gone through throughout the season and everything with the Continental Cup. But yeah, just an amazing experience. Higgy, I want to talk about obviously the you know that you're talking about the 13-14 season when we win the league. Um you go off for a year to you know walk around England uh, and then come back to Belfast again, uh, play a couple of seasons, but in a one off game for a championship and again against a tough opponent like Guildford, it literally was open for for anyone to take that win and, and lucky enough the chance managed to get that done. What was it feeling like for you in a one-off game coming off the bench for Smoke's winner? Yeah, I mean, it was an awesome feeling. Listen, that was one of the biggest reasons why, you know, I, I came back to the Giants that year. Um, I had a couple of conversations with Kiefer and, you know, I, you know, I was following along a little bit and watching some of the games. And I just knew how how good and how deep this team was. So, you know, to, I wouldn't have came back if, you know, I didn't think that we had the opportunity to to win some hardware that year. So it was a great feeling, you know, to come back mid, mid-season mid after, you know, taking a year and a half off of, off of playing and to come back and, and win a one-off game like that and win a championship that, you know, we'll, we'll have to look back on for the rest of our lives. Um, it was definitely a special moment for me, that's for sure. Dicko, just before... The winner from Smo, like I mean, talking about fifteen seconds earlier. Do you remember Ben Davies breaking in on on uh, Besco when Besco coming up with a blocker save? See, I'll be honest with you, because I went down to the bench with Jelly because we wanted to be there, win or lose, when the goal was in. You know, I couldn't see anything. I, I remember, I can remember the bench crew uh, cheering on Besco, and I was trying to look through the side glass. There's like a, like a bit of glass that looks kind of through Cardiff's bench or Guildford's bench actually. So I, I could kind of see that something was going, but I, I we couldn't see anything back there. Uh, so I was just going by the reaction of the bench. And the bench was going, you know, going crazy basically because he made a big save. Um, but no, I actually I actually couldn't see anything because we wanted to be down there with the team. But we also wanted to stay, stay out of the way, you know, towards the tunnel end, so we're not in the way, and you know, we're not getting like because you don't know how long OT is going to go for. You don't want to be in the way. Look again, I know you've taken up a lot of your time here tonight, boys, and I really do appreciate it. But I just want to get your feeling on, you know, you've got a ball of champagne in your hands. Blair Riley picks up the trophy again from uh, uh, Mike Hicks, I believe it was that year. And um, who's aiming for his eyes with the champagne? Boxy, it must have been you, like. Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, you, you kind of reflect on, on those experiences and, um, you know, obviously not playing anymore. It's just so special to, to look back at the pictures and the videos and the memories that we all have. But, yeah, it was just if you could if you could experience that every day, you know, it'd be, it'd be amazing. But it's um, it was it was such a cool experience. And, and as I mentioned previously, just to, what we went through that season uh, with the Continental Cup to finally to win some silverware and, and, and for the group to, to, to come together the way we did, it was just such a such a special experience. But um, yeah, regarding the champagne, just uh, that's part and parcel of doing these things. And um, it was just such an awesome experience to, to do that with the group. And Higgy, you, lift, you get the chance to lift that trophy above your head, skate towards the, the corner there with, with uh, accommodated the chance fans. Again, it, it, you know, obviously you're doing it as much as for them as what you're doing it for yourselves as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, listen, some of the best years of, of my pro career was, was in Belfast. Um, and one of the biggest reasons for that was, was how good the fans are. Um, you know, I, I, I tell people now, you know, when I talk about playing in Belfast, the biggest thing I talk about is how, how passionate the fans are. Um, so to be able to lift that trophy, um, I knew that that was truly going to be, you know, my last year. Uh, so to win that, lift that trophy up and, and you know, see those fans celebrating uh, one more time, it was, it was truly a special feeling. You've got a, um, a regular job now. Are you missing it? Yeah, 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 I am. Um, I, I, you know, Boxy and I get together a lot and uh, we talk about it. our lives are definitely, definitely different now. Um, you know, you, you go from playing in front of 10,000 fans to uh, working a regular nine to five job where, you know, uh, still getting yelled at. So that's kind of the same as, as before. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, it, it's, it's just different. And one of the biggest things you miss is, is being around the guys every day, being in that locker room, you know, going to battle with those guys day in and day out. Uh, that's one of the biggest things that I miss. Boxy, we've already touched on your your daddy duties, um, and obviously you must be enjoying that. But again, having a job and you know, as as Higgy says, just missing the banter in the dressing room, and I'm obviously being ripped by Dicko as well every day. Must you you probably don't miss that part? No, I, I miss I miss Dicko for sure, and I miss all all the guys. But uh, there's a couple of guys. Ironically, my manager he played college hockey, so I do. You know, we have have that sort of um, common common. Uh, common topic that we talk about but from from a day-to-day um existence yeah 100 percent. just miss miss being in the locker room with the guys and um just sort of going through that journey for nine months with, with such a with a, such a special group of human beings you know belfast always recruits good people so um you know it's, it's obviously been an adjustment and, and you definitely miss those experiences but just fortunate to have to have also had those experiences right we were able to, to sort of reconvene and talk about them like we are right now so um yeah, it's been an adjustment, but uh, just happy that you're able to look back and, and have such fond memories of those experiences. And Dicko, you know, 10, 11 years as a Belfast giant now, you've played in, on uh, numerous championship winning teams. Um, this one at that year, and obviously, you know, going on and picking up the, the league trophy while celebrating the fan event in a hotel um, was uh, was pretty special at, at 2018-19 this season. Yeah, that, that that team, you know, it was funny because it could that, that season could have been either way. Let's say you know Guilford scored that breakaway by Ben Davis, or Cardiff, you know, pull it out that last team. That team could have walked away with nothing, you know, no runners up medals, but they didn't. And uh, it ended up being one of those teams. The the championship teams are the teams you remember. I've actually, I think I've still, yeah, that's in there, right? Still got them up here. There's boxing. Oh yeah. So, uh, but yeah, no, it's a, it's a very special team, and uh, I keep in touch with a lot of those guys like Besco and Bear Riley. Not boxing at the minute, I'm ducking them because I don't want to do him a favor. Um, <laughs> it's a great group of guys. Chance, listen, I really appreciate your time tonight. Thank you very much. I hope you're all keeping well. Obviously, this COVID pandemic's a, a real pain on the backside, but uh, hopefully, you might see it back in Belfast someday. Um, and uh, Deco, I'm sure I'll see you someday soon as well. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, that's, that's, I, mean, I appreciate it. Thanks, thank you. All right, lads.